I'm now going to hand over to Will. Will, if you want to take it from here. Thank you very much, Connor. So, uh, good evening, everybody. Um, as Connor said, my name is Will Burnham. I am the Community Engagement Officer for Wensdale Railway. Uh, that's a big fancy title, but, but essentially what that means is that I am the one who's in charge in of part of a big team, but I'm the one who's sort of in part of charge of a large part of getting Leeming Bar Station House back to how it uh, would have looked. Now, many of you will know about this project that we're working on, some of you might not, uh, but the Leeming Bar Station House project is uh, a huge, huge, massive, uh, probably the most ambitious project that Wensdale Railway has taken on, supported by the National Lottery Heritage Fund to restore the station to how it would have looked about 100 years ago in the 1920s. And we don't just mean the exterior, we're not just trying to make it look pretty from the outside. We, we, our aim is to, if you walk onto the platform at Leeming Bar Station House and you walk into the buildings, it's going to feel like you're in the 1920s. We want it to smell like the 1920s. We want it to look like the 1920s. We want you to be listening to 1920s music and meeting people who are dressed in 1920s outfit who can tell you about this station when it was at its absolute prime. Because Leeming Bar Station has been around for uh, since the uh, 18... 60s, uh, I think that's about right, uh, but the 1920s is really when you had a huge amount of industry and things going on, and so we thought at Wensleydale Railway, what a perfect time to pick to show you what we would have looked like. So I will move to my first slide, if it will move to my first slide, one second. There we go. So before I get started talking about the station, I'm going to do a very, very quick rundown of the history of Wensleydale Railway. I recognise some faces in the crowd tonight, and I know that I will be being very fast and loose with the history, but I don't want to get too bogged down in it. But I would like everyone to know a little bit more about uh, Wensleydale. So at 22 miles long, Wensleydale Railway is the, the longest heritage railway in the UK. Uh, it breaks from the main line at North Allerton, and went its way west, uh, through Wensleydale all the way uh, down to Hawes. Uh, its history actually starts stretches really far back. It, it was founded, the, 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 the track was founded after an act of parliament of 1864. Um, this allowed 272 new and existing railway companies to extend their lines all the way across the country, covering it with a proposed nine and a half thousand miles of new track. Uh, not all of that track was completed, but at Wensleydale it was. Uh, it was a time of what we call railway mania. People were just building railways wherever they could, and even quiet rural Wensleydale didn't, uh, uh, didn't sort of uh, miss out on it. Now, the initial line uh, was built by York, Newcastle and Berwick, who were a company who laid the five first five and a half miles. From on the right-hand side, you can see, on the right-hand side, you can see North Elton here, all the way up to Leeming Bar. They built that first five and a half miles um, and it only took two years, 1848 it was opened. Uh, whilst progress was really good to be in initially, it took a little bit longer to get the next section done. Because um, even though they had permission to build, uh, the bubble had sort of popped. People had realized that uh, railways are quite expensive things and they're not necessarily gonna bring all the cash back straight away. So it was uh, nearly 10 years before the next a set of um, track was built, which took, pe uh, took people all the way to Leyburn, you can see on the map there. The final section of track was laid between Leyburn and Hawes um, and was completed in 1878. Uh, some of you might know that actually the line doesn't finish there. And on the right, you can see this blue line turns yellow. And that's because uh, our line, the line that was started by London, Newcastle, Berwick and, and ended with uh, NER, North Eastern Railway, was met by another railway, Midlands Railway, who were coming in from Garsdale in the west uh, and building across the other way. In fact, it was really the fact that the uh, Midlands Railway were coming up to Hawes that got the railway finished and all the way up to, uh, to, to Asquig and Hawes itself. Basically, a North Eastern Railway saw the Midlands muscling and on their territory and there was a big run to get their line finished so they couldn't uh, steal their turf as it were. So the track leading to Hawes is uh, NER but as soon as you get into Hawes you're on to Midlands Railway. Um, there's actually a really interesting expression that comes out of laying track at this time. The point of origin of the line where you start, so in our case North Allerton, is known as the top of the line. If you move away from that you are going down the line. 
if you're traveling to the top, you're going up the line. And that's why, why people often refer going up to London, regardless of where you come from, because almost every train line started in London and was built out from that point. So that's why people say, oh, I'm off up to that London. That's where that comes from. But it does get very confusing when you're on the Wensdale line because you're going, uh, um, so let me get this right. I don't want to get this wrong because you would be going down the line until you get to Hawes. And then when you're in Hawes, you're suddenly going up the line because the two rival railways were building across each other. Nice and confusing. Hopefully that made some semblance of sense. So that is just a very potted, very quick history of, of, of where the railway came from. And I want to talk about our station in a little bit more detail. So the grand, show, the grand star of the show tonight is Leeming Bar Station. Um, and as I mentioned before, it is probably one of the most ambitious projects that Wensleydale Railway has ever undertaken. At the station, we're create, recreating what life would have been like 100 years ago. Uh, our ambition is to create a bit a time capsule, essentially, where schools, members of the public, um, special interest groups, people of all different backgrounds can come and immerse themselves in railway history. Uh, we have a number of fascinating rooms that I'll be talking about a bit later tonight, and we're currently renovating them, taking real special time, care and attention to get them as close to what they would have looked like as possible. We're basing a huge amount of what we do on the building itself. It has and I'll be coming to this later, lots of little secrets, things that we've only found out once we've stripped the wallpaper back and once we've chiseled things away, we go, ah, we didn't know that, but we were learning. We're also basing it on histories. We have, believe it or not, uh, some people that remember this station in not quite the 20s, but the 30s, who, have who we've taken their oral histories and we've been able to use what they've told us to recreate exactly what was there. Uh, and so we're not only going to show you at, uh, at the Leeming Bar Station that what we call the front house, the ticket office, the, the parcels room, but we're also wanting to show you what the station master's house would have looked like. The entire ground floor of Wensdale, right, uh, sorry, of Leeming Bar Station is going to look as it would have done. So you're going to get the station master's parlour. You're going to get the kitchen and we're having a coal fired range where you're going to be able to smell people cooking food and and then see recipes from that period being cooked. We've got a wash yard. We even have a restored mangle. So there's going to be all sorts of good fun to be had. Oh, oh sorry, I skipped on there. Um, now, the reason we are able to do this is because we have form. This is not the first time that Wensleydale Railway has gone back into the past and looked into their history. We have the amazingly successful Scruton station to thank for the ability to, for Leeming to do what it can today. Um, Scruton station, a bit of a, a smaller station, well, a lot smaller than Leeming, um, but in the early 2000s, a group of Wensleydale volunteers began restoring this station. The photo on the bottom left you see there is not as they found it. When they found it, it was lost in bush. In fact, there was a tree growing through the roof of the building. Uh, the, the, this group of entirely volunteers restored the station. They rebuilt the platform. They reglazed the windows. Uh, and they, as I said, we want to do it leaming. They restored it to how it would have looked 100 years ago. In fact, I have another really fantastic photo of the inside of the ladies' waiting room at Scruton. You can see that top right picture there. And you can just feel like you're going in back in the past. They run education groups out of there. They run special holiday, they an awarding Christmas every year. And they are going to be part of an offer that Wensleydale Railway are going to offer, which I'll, I'll come on to a little bit later. So our station, uh, Leeming Bar. Before you, I show you what we've achieved so far, I thought it'd be good to just give you a very, very brief history of the station itself. It was designed by George Townsend Andrews, a really prolific and very high status architect who was working in the middle of the 19th century. Some of you may have heard of him before, but if you haven't heard of him, I guarantee, well, pretty much guarantee you have seen his work. He designed York Station. He designed um, Hull Station Hotel. He designed Beverly Station. He designed um, a number of buildings through York, non-railway non buildings throughout York. And this was one of the many projects he worked on. The big picture at the bottom left you can see there is a portico. Now, this is quite an elaborate detail for a small station, 
uh, if you look at other stations up and down the line, you will not see this kind of extravagance. Uh, but this is the eye to detail that um, that uh, uh, George put into his some of his buildings. And we think the reason he really made sure that this one had this fine detail was that uh, Looming Station originally um, was on the Great North Road. And so you could see it literally from, you could see the portico from the Great North Road. So they put that extra bit of detail into that one there. On the right hand side there, you can see some of the restoration work that's already gone in. After the station uh, was shut down uh, as, a, as a commercial line, it was sold to a local business owner. Um, and he put a, a modern PVC windows in there, which I'm sure you can imagine didn't look particularly nice. But the restoration efforts that have gone in, those are proper fully functioning sliding sash windows as exactly you would want to see. Now, there's a, I've mentioned a, a fair handful of rooms and, and, and areas that we're going to be talking about tonight. I thought I'd give you a very, very quick overview of what you're seeing. These red arrows are sort of the direction of where we'll travel as I show you the rooms tonight. But it's also there because we think when we open this station, it's going to be open to the general public. You're going to be able to just come along, buy a ticket to go on the train and explore the house. Now, as modern times would have it, we have COVID and we have to be very careful. So those arrows are also on there for a bit of a one-way system, but that's not too pertinent to tonight. The, on the left-hand side there, that square with the four smaller squares in, that's the portico that we were just looking at. The parcels office is the room with the bay window. And as we travel through, you can see there's a ticket office and a waiting room. These are what we call the front house. Uh, that's maybe not what they would have called it, but it's the term we've sort of fallen upon. These are the rooms where if you were a member of the public, you would be able to access these rooms. To the right hand side, you see the station master's parlour, a kitchen, a hallway, a wash house and a wash yard. These are the station master's home and these are all going to be done as well as I previously mentioned. Now the parlour. The parlour, yeah, so it's the parlour, parcels office, sorry. This is the parcels office. You can see our architect, uh, Richard, there, uh, showing us his great designs of what's been restored and what's happened. Uh, not looking too photogenic in this photo, but this as is what it was given to us by the builders. When we started this project, a large part of uh, it was given out to builders. And then once the builders had finished, they handed it back to us. And a group of volunteers have been decorating and doing the final touches to get it fully restored and back to work in order. So this is we, how we got it uh, back from the builders. But when we got back from the builders, I mentioned that we kept finding little secrets. And this in this room, we found a good few. This picture at the top left, you can see here, is this, we call them shadows um, on the wall. This is the parcels office, as I mentioned. It's, it's an office where you could buy packages, buy, well, so send packages rather, uh, buy stamps, send things up and down the line. And on that wall, that top left picture you see there is where we believe a filing cabinet was screwed to the wall. Uh, we have taken the dimensions of that and we are building, we know what they would have looked like because we have a book of NER standards and we are rebuilding uh, the, um, the look at the parcels rack you see there. There's actually two of them exactly. We're going to put them exactly where they were 100 years ago, really, really trying to get that attention to detail. On the right hand side, an even fainter detail. The photo is not fantastic, so I do apologise, but you can see a broadly square shaped mark on the wall. This is where a fusey clock used to be. In the photo you can see underneath, you can even just see the bottom bevel on where, where it would have sat against the wall. And so once again, we're going to get one of those clocks so you can, it will be exactly where it should have been. And this is what the room looks like now. It's been painted up by our, by our volunteers, as I mentioned previously, and it is looking incredible. We have the, uh, we know that this is the decorations that were in this room, because as I mentioned previously, we have oral histories where people tell us that this is what it looked like. The livery or the colour scheme of the NER in the 1920s uh, was this dark red and cream colour with a nice black band in the middle. I particularly love in the photo on the right hand side, they can see there, Tim fettling with his black lines. He was very, very particular about it and absolutely straight, which, um, which I'm very happy with. Now you will notice there's no furniture in here. It is still a work in progress. The station is set to open when COVID relaxes and the rooms are ready to receive the furniture. We have a lot of furniture. I'll be talking about some of that later on tonight, but there is still work to be done in these rooms to get them how they would have been. 
We've acquired parcels, uh, luggage racks and parcels racks. We've acquired, like I say, we're rebuilding pieces of the furniture that were originally there, but there is a bit of work left to go. As we move on, the next room that is being restored is our ticket office. Now, the photo on the top left is uh, what was happening before the building went to the builders for restoration. You see, this building was being used by the, um, uh, by the Wensdale Railway as our administrative hub for the railway. Um, and this room here was uh, a, an area, resource area, let's call it that, let's call it that, shall we? Uh, where things were stored long, medium to long term, uh, but originally it was the tickets office. So when we received this back from the uh, uh, builders, we told them to build us a ticket screen. And what you can see is on the right. But we weren't happy. The ticket screen in many ways was perfect, but the actual hatches they installed, we didn't like because we went back to our research and we found some originals. The one you can see on the left hand side there is the original ticket screen from Scruton Station. Now there's an interesting story here. You see, this was taken out when the station was originally closed down and it went to a local museum. Now when Scruton Station was being restored, they went to this museum and said, please can we have our screen back? And they said, I'm sorry, it's part of an installation, you can't have it. So Scruton went and built on their own. And then just a few short little years later, the station closed, sorry, the museum closed and they said to him, uh, would you like this screen? And they went, oh, bloody hell, we've fixed our own in now. So we, we have the original Scruton screen and we have installed it at Leeming Bar. Um, you can see here the iron grill that is in there and David Harrison, uh, a carpenter that works with us, has refit the shape to really make it work. In fact, in the next photo, you can really see how it looks. The grill's been taken out, it's, it's not been fixed in properly, but each of those two hatches will have an iron grill fixed in place. The box that you see on the right hand side on the photo at the left, that is, an, the, that, that is the original you saw in the previous photo. But David Harrison has made a brand new one to go at the left hand side there. And so we have two exactly the same. We're really, really lucky to have David Harrison. He's an incredible carpenter and he's uh, done some brilliant, brilliant work, which you'll see as we go through. In fact, uh, what we're gonna have is what, it, what we know stations would originally had. We are gonna have a tickets um, hatch and we are also gonna have an inquiries hatch as well where you can uh, book for events or things like that that are going to happen at the station. As uh, one thing that is happening literally this week which we are massively excited about is an original station clock is being installed. The face, the, the picture you can see at the top left there is um, a picture of a clock from the Hull and Barnsley line? I might be wrong. I know there's someone shouting at me around right now. The Hull and something or the line. I've forgotten the exact name of it. But this is a double-faced clock. If you were to turn that box around, you would see another clock face on the far side. That's being installed in the wall of the uh, par of, of the ticket office. So um, someone selling you a ticket on the inside, this time would read the exact same as someone stood outside. Um, the two clocks are linked together, you see, so there's a nice ticking clock that will be in there. Once again, David Harrison's painted up the uh, box in the NER colours, and we've got a clock a volunteer who's a clock restoration specialist. It's amazing the amount of people that, that Wensleydale has and works with, who is currently restoring the fittings that are going inside. You can see here where David Harrison's cut through the wall, and we'll be installing uh, the clock uh, just next week. We've just got a couple of bits to finish off on that one before we move on. So really exciting times. You can see there's a lot going on. As we move through here, you can see our ladies' waiting room. The photo on the left is when it was being used as an office. And the photo on the right is what was given back to us by the, um, by the builders. Now, there's lots of interesting things about this room here, lots of interesting points to pick up. First of all, um, you will see that there's some cornicing, the, 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 the work around the ceiling there. Now, before we sent it to the builders, uh, we knew there was cornicing. You can see in the photo on the left-hand side. But if you compare the left to the right, you'll see there's a lot more cornicing on the right-hand photo. It's deeper. And that's because when the builders were in there, they realised that um, when this building had been gone out of use with the railway, it had been used as a residential property. In fact, they'd split it into two halves, upstairs and downstairs. And to make sure that they were fire safe, they had screwed some uh, insulation to the ceiling. Lovely insulation. Can you guess what kind of insulation they might have used in the 1960s? That's right, our old friend asbestos. Screwed to the ceiling. 
Um, and I only discovered, uh, a, a, well, like I say, a year ago, Teresa, who worked in that office, I'm sure was really happy to know that she'd been working under that. But that was another secret, something we didn't know about. This cornicing that we thought was you know, quite nice turns out to be really deep and really beautiful. You can see another photo of it on the right there. And you can even see where previous people who painted the room haven't been able to paint the top layer of cornicing because it was under that, uh, that lining. Photo on the left here, you can see where a gas, um, a gas line and a gas light would originally have been. If I just pop back to the previous photo, you can see it's above the fireplace there. I would love to tell you right here and now that we are reinstalling gas, but funnily enough, we're not, uh, because that would, would, would be unfeasible. But again, seeing these shadows, we're going to work with it. We're going to try and put something there so that it will replicate what was going on. Now, you might be asking yourself about the uh, print on the walls. Uh, another one of these little, little traces of what used to happen. We don't believe that this is the wallpaper that was there in the 1920s. Uh, so this is the print that was on the wall in the 1920s. The reason for that is because um, we believe it's actually wallpaper where the pattern has bled through. And the reason we think that is if the edge strips on the right, on either side of the chimney breast, you see here and here, um, they have the print on the wooden beading which would be very weird because it would be very strange to print onto the beading you'd wallpaper on the first. So even though we found that, we don't think it what dated from the original period, but from a later period, and the print is soaked through the paper. So like I say, we keep discovering interesting things. And this is what it looks like now. This is the room. It, it looks fantastic. I know it looks a bit like an empty box, but you've got to imagine uh, full of furniture, which it will be very soon. Railway posters. It's quicker by rail. All that good stuff that will be in there. And you can wait for your train in this room. Oh, I will have to ask you to forgive the very inaccurate three pin plug that someone foolishly installed into this room. But, uh, but we, we live and we learn. Now on the right, this photo you can see here is of the um, of a bench that's been restored. Now it looks absolutely beautiful. This is uh, one that's been restored for us by some of our incredible Wensdale volunteers. When we got this bench, in fact, a number of benches like this, it did not look like this. It looked more like this. Uh, these were uh, donated to us from Grange over Sands uh, in a fairly sorry state, but. Our, our volunteers, as I said, have taken a huge, huge amount of time to restore these benches. They were full of um, uh, rot, they were full of moths, they were full of mould, they were gross. But the volunteers have tented them and got rid of the moths and they've taken off the horse hair, they've taken out the spring, they've restored them, they've brought up the wood, they have done incredible work. And so now when you look at them, you can see there, the photo on the left is where they've restrung everything in on the process to being refinished. And again, that photo of it on the right hand side there. So we have three of those that are going to go into the station. But I just, I, I had to bring this up because it's such incredible work. When I saw them, I thought they were there. I thought they were ready for the bin. But, uh, but uh, uh, Joan, Beryl and Jules spent months working on these and were very, very, very proud of them. So as we move on, those are the rooms that have been are a really good state. That in a couple of weeks' time, if we it, we can be ready to open the station, they will be ready to go. I did mention the station master's house though, and that is so, that is a work in progress. We're only a few steps behind that, but it might not be open for day one. This is the station master's parlor. Uh, now I'm sure you can imagine what would have gone in there. Uh, we've got a um, uh, we've got a. A lovely table and some chairs for this room here. We have a grandfather clock. Can you imagine the fire burning with the station master smoking his pipe and kids playing on the rug? That sort of thing. We even have a harmonium that's going to go into this room here. The photo on the right you see there is some William Morris wallpaper, and I'm a, I'm a bit. I, 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 it's, it's, it's a bit of a shame because if you'd have if if we'd have had this talk in a week's time, you would have seen this wallpaper on the walls. It's literally going up this week. Um, so we've researched authentic wallpapers and get it exactly right. This is going to be the most uh, extravagant room of the house where the uh, station master could have shown off, uh, you know, his middle class status and felt fairly well healed. Again, another interesting secret that we found in this building is when the builders were working, they were working on this window and they working in the bottom section, as you can see on the right hand side here, and they realized there was something a bit odd. So they went, oh, we found this weird wooden thing. Would you like us to tear it out? 
and the uh, um, and the um, uh, Phil, I believe, who was in charge of the building work at the time, went, no, 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 don't pull it out. Don't, let's have a look at it. And it turned out that this was a box blind. So instead of having curtains, these had this window had shutters, and they were still there. So the sliding sash windows go up and down, but then there was another set of sashes in front of those that had big wooden blinds. In fact, the you can see one of them, it's not been installed yet, on the right hand side there. So what you would do at the end of the day when you want to pull your blinds up is you take the wooden section that's down there, pull that out, and just like a window, you would wheel them up on the counterweights and it would create a big wooden board, essentially, two parts that would go in front of your window. We had no idea they were there. In fact, I don't think anyone knew they were there until the builders got going with this building. So it's just really it's such a rich vein of things that we're finding. I'm not going to hang on to these next rooms too much because as you can see, they are still a work in progress. We have a kitchen that you can see here, with it, which is going to have a coal fired stove um, and we have a larder. Um, this room was extended in the 1920, 1919, I believe. And one thing that I always love, and it doesn't properly come off in this photo, but I hope it's, it's some interest, is you can see in that top photo, there is a beam that runs across the room. Everything beyond that beam dates from 1919. And the window, you can, that small window you can see there is one of those windows. Now, when you're in the kitchen, you can feel that beyond that beam, everything slopes to the left a little bit, like it wasn't built particularly up to, up to snuff. And it seems that the builders even knew that as they were building it, because the window you can see is completely wacky. It's not square, even slightly. The bottom, the lintel and the mantle, mantle, I suppose you'd call it, are both off kilter. And, and when you look at the window and you slide the sashes, the wood has been cut off kilter. So they knew they were cutting it wrong. I don't know how you got to that point where you went, ah, oh, it's just easier to build it on all than a slant than just to build it square. It seems harder to make it not square than square to me, but what do I know? So we just keep finding, we don't necessarily have an answer to why they did that, but it is an interesting one. This is the last room I'm gonna talk about, the washroom. We are intending for this to be a fully functioning washroom where we'll have a wash copper, where you will have mangles, where we will have a, a old fashioned iron irons, uh, where you will have possers and dolly tubs and all that good stuff. We have a wash yard outside, we have a working mangle. Right now, it's our paint store. So there's not a lot to show you in there at this moment in time, but I just thought I should, I should show it for the sense of completion to show you all the rooms. Now I mentioned hidden secrets and there are more. We did also restore upstairs, which has uh, been turned into offices for, for, for the railway. Um, but upstairs and downstairs, we found a large amount of interesting notes and scribbles and bits and pieces. Now, the eagle-eyed among you might be able to see what this one says. This says five comma six rolls. This is a wallpaper's um, mark to, to be able to see what was happening. We found a, a good few of them. Some of them are legible, some of them legible. So prior eyes over this one, see if you can work out what this one says here. Yeah, I know it's, 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 it's hard work. I, can, uh, I don't think many people are going to get it, but I have done the hard work for you. This says John Heach, paper hanger. York, 1895, July 23rd, which is just really lovely. We've, uh, the, we have ones dating to even earlier than this, but I've got one more for you here. I won't try and make you read this one. It's even harder. This one says Frank Myers, paper hanger and decorator, LNER contractor, Leeming, North Allerton, with, again, his amount of roles that he needed to, uh, to complete the job. Now, why are we going to all this effort? I've gone through a huge amount of, uh, of information today. I've really overloaded you with stuff that we are doing. Why are we going to all this effort? Well, the reason is that Wensadale Railway is an incredible railway with some amazing uh, views, some amazing buildings, some amazing volunteers and people who bring it all alive. And this is kind of a time period that people don't talk about very much. Uh, we thought it'd be really, really interesting to talk about a rural station in North Yorkshire at its height in the 1920s. There was a huge amount going on. We're researching the station masters who worked here, the local businesses that all fed into the, uh, all fed into the um, station and the, and the railway. And we want people to know about that. And most importantly, we want people to engage. Some people love reading books. Some people like 
watching TV. And that is how they engage with their history and learn about their past. What we want to do here is engage the senses. I know that I learn best when someone talks to me and someone tells me things and someone can show me things. What we are hoping to do at Leeming Bar is to have costume interpreters throughout the building. You'll find them in the parcels office weighing up your packages. You'll find them in the kitchen doing demonstrations about cheese making or cooking pies or something. You'll see them in the wash house showing people how washing was done a hundred years ago. And there's a huge amount of people where that is what makes history come alive. It makes something that you can live and not just read about. And it's going to bring people to Leeming Bar as well. There's a huge amount of, um, and to the railways, uh, we're, we're hoping to run, we are going to run a thing called the Heritage Trail, which is where we're going to run between Beedale, Leeming Bar and Scruton. And at Leeming Bar and Scruton, you're going to have costume people to tell you about different periods of history and tell people about our railway. We're really, really excited because there's a huge amount of opportunities. Um, so where do we go next? Well, first of all, we're going to finish the station. As you have seen, it is a work in progress. I called this talk uh, a return to glory. We are getting there. Uh, I, I, I kind of wrote it down, then 10 minutes later, I went, no, maybe that was a bit grand. But we are definitely returning to glory, even if we're not quite there yet. Our next step is to get volunteers into costume and get them talking to members of the public, and then to welcome people to the 1920s. That's what it's about. It's about letting people immerse themselves and disappear into life a hundred years ago. And to support that, we've got loads of stuff we're gonna do. We have events planned. We have school trips that are gonna come in. We have loan boxes, which are just suitcases off the platform side that are gonna go into schools so kids can learn about what life was like, even when they're not at the station. We're hoping to uh, bring special talks, a bit like this one, but with, with specialists who can tell you more about the history, do walking tours around the place. It is going to be a hive of activity, Leaming Bar. It's not going to be up open on an odd day. It's not going to be open on a high holiday. We are planning to have this open during the summer period, minimum five days a week. And we want it to become an attraction that people will come from far and wide to see. So that's what I've got to tell you tonight, ladies and gentlemen. I hope that has been of some interest. There is a lot still to do. There's a lot of other avenues I could have gone down tonight. I don't want to overload you with too much, uh, but I, uh, I had been talking all the way through and I was wondering um, if anyone had anything they'd like to ask me. I've, like I say, stranded in a couple of different ways, but if you want to know anything, um, put your hand up, Connor will take some questions. Uh, but apart from that, thank you so much for listening.